So yeah, what we're here to do today is to replicate the kind of tape stop effect. Uh, if you don't have like third party plugins, I think D Blue Glitch does it quite well and a few other things do it. But if you're just like limited to stock Ableton stuff, it's fairly easy to do. Kind of similar results. I'm just going to be showing you a few different ways on how to achieve a similar sound. Or just the kind of pitch down wow thing. Uh, yeah. So what we have here is... Yeah, so the first technique of doing this is resampling. I don't know what resampling is. It essentially records what you're doing in Ableton as an audio file, and then so you can edit, manipulate what whatever you want and resample it into your project. So this is easy enough to do. Make sure you got the I/O selected, otherwise you won't see this fancy menu here. And create a new channel just for this, okay? Okay, inputs, change that to resampling. Even Ableton knows you're gonna use resampling. Hit this to record enable. And what do I want to do the pitch down effect to? I think I might do it to the chords. I'm going to turn off the side chain. So yeah, if we go ahead and select this and record that, it should sound like uh, No, it's not. No, because we haven't soloed it. Solo whatever you want to do, that would definitely help. 10 out of 10. Cool. So it's, it's even warped it for us, which I don't really need, but okay. Thanks, Ableton. It's the same, it's just audio, it's essentially freeze flattening it. Oh no, it's not, it's just recording it, what am I saying? Okay, so we have this. I reckon that could, this little chunk here could do the tape stop effect, go meow. Yeah, so once you've opened up the audio and this little uh, box down below, I'm so technical with my names, uh, or with my titles. Yeah, uh, you wanna select this E right here and change this from volume to transposition modulation. So this controls the pitch. And you'll see this little red bar uh, pop up. It's dashed at the moment because it's not in use, but once you click and add an automation point, it will be like, okay, we're doing something. I'll highlight this bar and change it to red. I'm doing another automation point at the end by just clicking and then holding click and drag and you can change the transposition, pitch, whatever. So. Depends how crazy you want to get with your tape stop. That sounds quite cool. Back and delete the stuff we don't need. So we've just got this tape stop kind of thing happening and go back into chords since we're not using that and just delete that. Probably turn on the side chain again. Chuck it into the group. Check the volume. Uh, I, th I think that should be good. We need more of a tape stop effect, I reckon. It's kind of sounding out of place with his buddies. Not bad. I'm happy with that. So yeah, that's one instance of just recording a specific element. If you don't solo anything when you resample record, it will legit record everything, I'm pretty sure, so. So what do we have here? Okay, this is probably going to sound rubbish, but I just want to emphasize the point. Uh, we've got a massive chunk. Oh, we could just do this and it won't sound rubbish. And just delete the shit that we don't need. So say you had this flanger on your bass, um, and yeah. Because we recorded that little resample area before, uh, it doesn't have any flanger on its base, obviously, and it won't keep up to date with the changes you make. It's strictly audio now. So, yeah, just save this resampling uh, pitch down technique towards the end, and it should be all good. And the other technique I have is using the frequency shifter on the master, and this is where things get a little bit tricky because it's quite sensitive. The values are, um, are mental, so... You want to get the automation just right. I'd recommend doing a point right when the kick starts or right before and then 
another point just before that end. You'll hear, you'll hear the drastic sound changes it will do. Frequency shifter and saturator, one of my two favorite Ableton plugins. Unlimited uses for them. Simple, quick and easy two techniques which you can do. First off is resum. Actually, first off is you can probably edit the audio track, whichever one you're trying to manipulate. Say if we're working with audio here, which we have this chord loop, and then your e your envelope um, your envelope's already there. Transposition is already there. And you can just edit from there. Um, easy and if you're working with MIDI it's probably a good idea to do the resampling record audio so when that's in an audio file and in one of your tracks uh, you can just do the transposition modulation down tape style effect or if you just want to uh, do a crazy effect I would recommend the frequency shifter and then automating that down in parts but not going too hectic like honestly yeah you heard what it can do before it's it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> 